Yes, Ms Orr. Commissioner, as I indicated, the next case study uh, involves Suncorp and the first witness in that case study who's seated in the witness box is Mr <coughs> Ryan Lowe. Ryan spelt R-I-E-N. Mr Lowe, would you prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? An affirmation. Do you mind standing then while the affirmation is made? I solemnly and sincerely... I solemnly and sincerely... Declare and affirm... Declare and affirm... That the evidence I shall give... That the evidence I shall give... Will be the truth... Will be the truth... The whole truth... The whole truth... And nothing but the truth... And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Mr Lowe, do sit down. Yes, Ms Orr. Mr Lowe, could you please state your full name? Uh, Ryan Peter Lowe. And you reside in an, at an address in Victoria known to the Commission? Correct. Uh, what is your occupation, Mr Lowe? Uh, a TV producer. Thank you. And have you received a summons to attend and give evidence I today, have. Mr Lowe? Yes. I attended that summons, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.72, summons to Mr Lowe. And have you made a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 23rd of May 2018, Mr Lowe? Yes. And are the contents of that statement true and correct? Yes. I tender that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 3.73, statement of Mr Lowe, 23 May 18. Mr Lowe, in November 2015, your father passed away? Yeah, my father passed away in a workplace accident uh, and he suffered fatal injuries. And do you remember the date, Mr Lowe? Yeah, the 9th of November. And how old was your father at the time of his death? 63. Uh, 63? 63. Thank you. Uh, you said your father died in a workplace accident? Correct. Your father ran his own business? Correct. And what was the nature of that business? Oh, uh, yeah, he had a blasting contract company. A blasting contract, contract. company? Yeah. And how many people did your father employ in that business? At that time, it was just himself. How long had your father been running that business? He started the business around 1986. And at the time of his death, your father was living with your mother in the family home in Healesville, is that right? Yes. Uh, did uh, your mother and father own the family home? Yes. And was it subject to a mortgage? Yes. Uh, and how old was your mother when your father died? 62. And did your mother work? No. Your mother initially planned to come and give evidence in these commission hearings, is that right? Yes. Uh, she's decided not to give evidence? Yeah, she just found the experience a little bit too overwhelming and, and at this time she's, um, yeah, she's not doing so well. So. Um, in your mother and father's relationship, who looked after financial matters? My father. And after your father's death, did you look into your parents' financial affairs? I did. And why did you do that? Uh, because mum, I guess, wasn't in a position to... Dad looked after everything, so um, I just took it upon myself to, to sort of try and sort things out. And what did you learn about their financial affairs? Um, I learned um, that they, they had had a number of loans with Suncorp. OK. Yeah. And how many loans did you discover that your parents had with Suncorp? Um, after a bit of investigating, I um, established that there were actually five loans. OK. Yep. And, and did you work out when Suncorp had given your parents these loans? Yeah, I believe it was uh, 2013. And could you work out how much money across the five loans Suncorp had loaned to your mother and father? Yeah, it was, it was on a, almost a million dollars. And was your mother aware of these loans? No, she wasn't. What did you think when you discovered that Suncorp had loaned uh, almost a million dollars to your mother and father? <laughs> in the years immediately prior to your father's death? Um, I was surprised um, that they were able to obtain loans for that amount, considering, I guess, the amount of work that Dad was doing and, and the earnings that he was, he was making. What did you know about how your father's business was doing during that period? Um, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't see exact finances, but just reflecting on their, their lifestyle and the fact that Dad would um, quite often ask me to to borrow some money from me, um, I guess gave me an idea that the, he, he wasn't earning a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. And when you discovered these five loans <coughs> that uh, your parents had, did you think that your mother would be able to make the repayments on the loans? No. And why not? Ah, uh, because she wasn't earning any money. Mm. Did your mother have um, any income available to her at that time? 
Um, at the time, the, the property up in Queensland, um, they were renting it out for money. Um, I knew that that was an earnings that she, was, she, was, she would have been receiving at that time. So your parents had a property in Queensland? Yes. What sort of property was that? Um, it was a, a holiday home, uh, which they eventually they rented out. And why did they rent that out? Uh, because yeah, Dad's work wasn't doing as well. Okay. Did your parents own any other property? Uh, no, but they had a, a block of land in the superannuation fund. Uh, so was that superannuation fund a self-managed superannuation fund? Yes. And it owned a block of land, do you say? Yes. Was that block of land also in Healesville? Yes. And do you know why uh, that block of land had been purchased? Uh, yeah, so Dad um, bought that with his superannuation money uh, with plans to turn it into a, a property that they could rent out and earn an income from. What sort of property were they hoping to um, create on that block of land? Uh, like a warehouse factory type of structure. Um, now, at the time of your father's death, was there any structure on that property? Very basic structure, yes. Okay. And when you were going through your father's um, and your mother's financial affairs, did you discover any other liabilities uh, that your parents had? Um, well, there, were, there was a lot of bills. And uh, did you talk to the rest of your family about what you were going to do about the five Sun Corp loans and the bills? Yes. Um, so we got together, my sister, my brother-in-law, my dad's twin sister, his brother and myself sort of all got together just to work out how to tackle this, this situation. The loans at that time, was it apparent to you whether they were home or business loans? No. Okay. I, I just knew that they were loans. Okay. Yeah. So your family talked about how you were going to tackle the situation uh, and in the weeks after your father died, <clears throat> did you contact uh, Suncorp to discuss the loans? Yeah. So I initially made um, a call to Suncorp where I obviously um, explained the situation that we were in um, and uh, the answer from the lady from Suncorp was just, you need to sell the house. And that, that was the extent of the conversation. I see. And why did you contact Suncorp rather than your mother? I guess at that point, um, you know, we're all still coming to terms with, what, with obviously what had just happened. Uh, and I just took it upon myself to, to act on her behalf. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what did you think of the response from Suncorp that the solution was just for your mother to sell the house? Well, I wasn't happy with that solution. And after that phone call, did you take any further steps to communicate with Suncorp about the position your mother was in? Uh, yeah, so I, we Googled um, obviously what to do and we found on the, um, the Suncorp website that there's an application for assistance. Um, had, had that been mentioned to you in the phone call with Suncorp? No, it hasn't. Okay. And you have exhibited um, as Exhibit 1 to your statement a request for financial assistance form um, That's correct. If we could have that brought up. It's SUN 0801 um, This is a, a document provided to the Commission by Suncorp. You've been shown a copy of this document. And does it appear to contain information that you and your family included in a financial assistance form to Suncorp on behalf of your mother? Yes. And if we turn to the second page of that document, who was it who um, provided this information? It was done online, was it, Mr Lowe? Yes, it was done online. We, we all sat down as a family and filled this out. Okay. Yeah. And we see at the top of the second page... Um, what you said to Suncorp about the reasons why you were requesting financial assistance. And if we could have that blown up, we see that um, what you said on behalf of your mother was, my husband, Peter Julian Lowe, passed away on 9 November 2015. Peter was the sole breadwinner, as I do not work and have been a full-time housewife for the past 30 years of our marriage. I am unsure how to handle the financial situation I find myself in and need time to settle the estate so I can fully understand my financial position. I know I need to seek the appropriate financial advice, 
so I can fully understand what action I need to take, I kindly ask for your consideration to postpone all loan repayments for 12 months so I can do all the things I need to do. Thank you for your compassion and consideration. That's the information that you provided to Suncorp? Yes. And if we look further down that page, um, we see that you have, uh, I'm sorry, we might need to expand. Uh, oh, there it is, sorry, I have it. Under assistance options, I had it. <laughs> Back under assistance options, um, we see that you have ticked that what you were seeking for your mother was a postponement of loan repayments for 12 months. Yes. Why 12 months, Mr Lowe? Um, I guess the situation that we're in, um, losing Dad the way we did, it had an enormous effect on all of us, obviously. Um, just to try and get your life back to some sort of normality and dealing with this amount of finance, was it was, well, it was a lot to take in. So we did ask for 12 months so that we could we could just sort of try and sort mum's life out and just sort of try and get her, we'll just everybody adjust to what has happened and then sort of tackle the finances. Yeah. I see. And on the third page of this document, the next page, uh, we see that you gave information about your mother's assets and liabilities. Yes. And you listed as your mother's assets um, the family home and the value of that home. Uh, you listed the um, investment property in Queensland and the value of that property. Yes. And you listed uh, the land that we've referred to, the block of land and the value of that land, some money in savings account, savings accounts and some furniture and personal effects, as well as a car valued at $3,000. Yes. Uh, and you also listed your mother's liabilities on the other side of the page you listed the monthly repayments under the five Suncorp loans, each yes. of which required monthly repayments. Four of them required monthly repayments in excess of $1,000 and one of $560. And if we could pan out a bit so we can see the lower part of this page, we see there um, the figures of the total assets and the total liabilities. And if we turn to the following page, we see that you submitted a weekly, I'm sorry, a monthly budget for your mother, which referred to a CSS pension. Could you explain what that was? Yes, um, so my dad, previous to this job, worked for um, a government organisation and he was entitled to that pension uh, and that we found out was able to be passed to mum. I see. Yeah. Uh, so there was the pension amount and then rental income, which was rental income from the Queensland property. Correct. Uh, and then we see in your budget summary at the bottom of the page that the budget showed a monthly shortfall of your mother's ability to meet her expenses of $2,894. Yes. Is that right? That yes. was what you and your family worked out from looking at your mother's financial situation? Yes. She was just short of $3,000 short of being able to meet her monthly liabilities? Yes, that's correct. Um, this uh, request for first financial assistance was submitted online, you said? Yes. And did your mother subsequently receive a document in the mail that she had to sign um, as part of this application? Yes. And we have that document uh, as part of Exhibit 1 to your statement. It's SUN 0603 0002 We see there that your mother signed this document on the 12th of December 2015, so that's about a month after your father's death, is that right? That's correct. Uh, and how was your mother coping at this time when this application for financial assistance was submitted? Oh, she wasn't really coping. Okay. Yeah. And in January 2016, did your mother receive a response to this request for financial assistance? Yes. And you've annexed that as Exhibit 2 to your statement? Yes. 
SUN 0603 0002 uh, It's a two-page document. It would be helpful if we could have both pages on the screen. So this is a copy of the letter that your mother received? Yes. And we see from that letter that Suncorp refused to postpone the loan repayments for the 12 months you'd requested? Yes. Uh, and instead, Suncorp offered to adjust the arrears on the loans to show that they were um, no longer past due and to defer the next four monthly payments on each of the loans. That's correct. And do you, we see also from this letter that Suncorp made clear that it reserved its right to recalculate the repayment amounts on each loan after this time so that each loan would still be repaid in full on the last day of the term for each loan? Yes, that's correct. And what did you understand that to mean? I mean, we were disappointed we didn't get the 12 months, um, but obviously being given four months where we didn't have to, um, I guess, think about having to come up with that kind of money was, it was okay, but it wasn't ideal. Mm -hmm. And how did your mother react to receiving this response? No, oh, it, it just made her very worried. At a time when she shouldn't be, I guess, worrying, you know, a month after losing dad, we, yeah, we, it just made her very stressed. And yeah. we see that this letter was framed um, as an offer that required your mother's signature to accept it. You see that at the bottom of the second page? Yeah. Your mother accepted the offer? Yes. Uh, and why did she do that? Well, I guess at that point we, we felt there was no other option. Um, we'd asked for 12, we'd expressed our view, we were given four, so that, that we just accepted it. Yes. Yeah. And after this, did you contact Suncorp about trying to consolidate the loans? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I had a conversation with somebody at Suncorp asking if we could consolidate those five loans because they're all at various interest rates. Some of them are quite high. Um, and if we could put it into, yeah, just into one loan which would have reduced the amount of interest and then it would have at least given either my sister or I a chance to at least pay the interest. What sort of interest amounts were accruing on these loans at this time? It was approximately $1,200 a week. Okay. And did Suncorp permit you uh, to consolidate the loans? Uh, no. Uh, did you try and refinance the loans through other lenders? Yes. Um, we had um, a couple of conversations with other borrowers, but... Uh, also, we had a very short time frame, um, and because there were so many of us trying to assist, it was it was virtually impossible to get this organised. So, did you have any success with refinancing no. the loans to no, other we didn't. lenders? No. Uh, and during this time, you say in your statement that you and your family started looking into the financial position of the business at the time that the loans were approved. That's correct. And you say that you were concerned that your mother and father had not been in a position to repay the loans when they were approved by Suncorp? Yes. And you decided to make a complaint to FOS about Suncorp's conduct in approving the loans in the first place? Yes. Uh, you made that complaint, you tell us in your statement, in May 2016. Yes. How did you learn about FOS? Um, I was aware of an ombudsman because I had actually used one before with a phone bill. <laughs> um, so I, I, I Googled it uh, and, and came across the, the FOS um, process, and th that's, how I, that's how I went ahead with it. And at Exhibit 3 to your statement, uh, you've annexed documents that contain your uh, application to FOS. Is that right? Yes. And that's FOS 0028 0001 0054. <laughs> And there's a series of pages that follow that in which you summarise the matter that you were taking to uh, FOS's attention. Um, and after you made this complaint to FOS, were you given a point of contact at Suncorp? I believe so, yes. yes. Uh, now, the name of the person who was your contact point uh, at Suncorp is the subject of a non-publication order. Uh, but the person was a customer relations banker at Suncorp, so I'm going to refer to her by that title. I'll refer to her as the customer relations banker. Okay. Um, now, in December 2016, after you lodged this um, complaint in May 2016, 
FOS made a recommendation in relation to your complaint, is that right? That's correct, yes. And you've annexed a copy of that recommendation to your statement as Exhibit 4? Uh, yes. I, I want to summarise uh, the effect of that recommendation and, and see if this accords with your understanding of it. Um, the recommendation was that Suncorp's approval of one of the five loans that were extended to your mother and father was irresponsible. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, and the loan that FOS indicated was irresponsible was the final loan that was granted to your mother and father? Yes. And that was a business loan for $240,000? Uh, yes. And FOS referred to that loan in its um, documents as business loan B. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And it was granted in 2014, mm. is that right? Yes. And it was granted for two purposes. Um, one was to provide working capital for your father's business, and the other was to provide money to fund construction of the factory or warehouse on the block of land that your parents owned. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, and FOS said that Suncorp had acted irresponsibly when it approved that loan because it had already lent your father $200,000 a year earlier in 2013 which was also to complete construction of the factory or warehouse on the property. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so your father shouldn't have needed a further loan to fund construction that should have already been completed with the money under the previous business loan. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, did your father use the $200,000 that Suncorp advanced in 2013 to build the factory or warehouse on the block of land? I don't believe so. And do you know what he did with that $200,000? No, I don't. As far as you're aware, does your mother know what your father did with that $200,000? Unfortunately, she doesn't. Okay. And FOS found that Suncorp had not made adequate inquiries about the purpose of that final loan in 2014 or the status of construction of the factory and FOS said that if the inquiries had been made, they would have revealed that the funds hadn't been used uh, for the construction of the factory. Is that right? Yes. Um, and FOS also found that Suncorp had not acted irresponsibly when it approved the other four loans in 2013. It said your mother and father at that time could afford the loans. Is that right? That's correct. Did you accept this recommendation from FOS? No, I didn't. Why not? Um, I obviously agreed with their ruling of the fifth loan, business loan B. Yes. Um, but I still disagreed that they were in a position to afford the four, previous, the, the four loans prior to that. Yes, I see. And because you didn't accept the recommendation, the matter then went on to a formal determination by a FOS ombudsman, is that right? Yes. Uh, and in early 2017, after the recommendation but before any determination, did you and your mother decide to sell the family home? Yes. Um, and why did you decide to do that? Um, because um, I'd done some research and, and generally speaking when a, a, F a FOS case goes from a recommendation to a determination, it, it very rarely changes. Right. Um, and I was obviously very aware of the interest that we were being charged at the time, which was still accruing on those loans. Um, and also I'm aware that if a bank was to, um, to take the house and sell it, they, it could be done in a very quick fashion and it could be sold a lot cheaper. So, yeah, I, I took the initiative to, to get the house ready for sale. And in February 2017, did you receive an offer for your mum to buy the home? Yes, we did. And was that offer subject to finance? Yes, it was. And did you call Suncorp to tell them that you had that offer? Yes. And did you speak to the customer relations banker who I referred to before, who was handling your FOS complaint? Yes, I did. And what do you recall of that conversation? Um, when I spoke to that person, um, they straight away told me of their dissatisfaction of the fact that I had decided to sell the family home. Um, they reiterated to me on numerous occasions that they had the power to cancel the sale, to evict my mum from the house and to sell it according to, to subject to what they're happy with. 
Um, yeah. Um, now, I want to ask you, ask you what you did as a result of that conversation, but before I ask you that, can I ask how you felt as a result of that conversation? Well, I was shocked to begin with, but I was just very worried and, and it, it's scary. You know, we, we, were, we felt we were doing the right thing by selling the home and providing the bank with more than 80% of the money that was being owed. Um, it would have stopped those interest rates. Uh, that interest incurring, um, and I, I was I was very taken aback. Um, you know, I had come to this bank with a solution, um, and they weren't working with me as a team. They they were just constantly reminding me of the power the bank had and what they could do in order to basically go against everything that I was doing. What did you intend to do with the proceeds of sale? Um, with the proceeds of the sale, I, I knew that the the first four loans equated to just under 800,000 um, and the sale of the home would have just been over 800,000. So I knew that that would have paid out those loans. Um, so that, that's what I had intended to, to achieve was to, to sell the house and at least pay back those loans that at that point had been deemed responsible and, and stop that interest. And I said I was going to ask you about what you did as a result of the conversation. Did, did you raise concerns about this conversation afterwards? I, yes. Um, I, I asked to speak to that particular person's manager. Yes. And what do you recall of your conversation with the manager? Um, I obviously, um, I spoke to them just regarding the, the nature of the call, uh, my intentions of the call what was spoken about and just how I, I just thought it was um, it was unrequired and it was it was distressing. Did you make a complaint about that person? I did make a complaint. And what was the result of that complaint? I, nothing. Okay. Uh, did you also send an email to the case manager at FOS telling her about this conversation? Yes. Uh, and you've annexed the email you sent to that case manager to your statement as Exhibit 6. Yes. Okay. Now, did the sale of the family home end up proceeding at this time? Unfortunately, that sale fell through. Okay. And with the sale having fallen through, in February 2017, did you receive a copy of the determination that the FOS Ombudsman had made? Uh, yes, I did. And we'll go to that. It's Exhibit 7 to your statement. Uh, FOS 0028 is the covering letter and the determination follows at 0028 triple zero one three zero seven four. The determination was made on the 23rd of February 2017, is that right? That's correct. And uh, were you right? Was the determination ultimately in the same terms as the recommendation that had been made? Uh, yes, it was. Okay, so FOS again determined that Suncorp had acted irresponsibly in approving the 2014 loan, but not in relation to the four prior loans? Yes. Now, could I ask that you look at 3076 within the determination? We see there, under the heading determination, that it records that the determination was substantially in favour of the FSP, the financial services provider, Suncorp, and that the Ombudsman agreed with the case manager's reasons for the recommendation and the recommended outcome. The applicant remains liable for the 2013 loans and the revised debt under business loan B, as set out in section 2.4 of the determination. And what follows is a direction from FOS as to what was to occur as a result of that finding. Do you recall reading this, Mr Lowe? I do. And we see that what FOS directed was that within 14 days of the applicant's acceptance of the determination, Suncorp was to reduce the business loan B balance by approximately $40,000, which would take it to 
$222,000 approximately. That would be the revised debt and it was to cease charging any interest and fees accrued on that account after the 6th of February 2017. So the amount that the business loan B balance was reduced by, did you understand that to be the amount of interest that had been paid to date on the loan? Yes. Uh, and then uh, FOS says, it is also to apply any payments made to that account up until the date it applies the determination to further reduce any outstanding balance. The second part of what FOS says is having regard to FOS's expectations of the parties set out in section 3.4 of the recommendation, the applicant should provide Suncorp with a proposal for repayment of the 2013 loans and the revised debt. This proposal may be to pay the debts by sale of the security property, refinance or a reasonable payment arrangement accompanied by a statement of financial position and supporting documents. Suncorp is to work with the applicant to attempt to agree on a reasonable arrangement to repay the debts. What did you understand all of that to mean, Mr Lowe? To be honest, at the time I, it was, I was reading through it and I I obviously didn't understand that part enough, yeah. Over the page, we see that it continues at 3077. Perhaps if we could have both of the pages on the screen. What FOS said was that if the parties are unable to reach an agreement for repayment of the debts within 30 days of the applicant's proposal, or if no proposal is provided, Suncorp may be entitled to commence recovery action with respect to the debts once the FOS dispute is closed. This may include taking possession of and selling the home and investment property. Do you recall reading that? I recall reading that. And what did you understand from all of that? Um, that I understood that if, yeah, if we didn't come to an agreement with the bank, that within 30 days, they were able to enforce that. And if the applicant does not accept this determination, Foz said, within 30 days of its issue, then Suncorp is not required to comply with it. Suncorp will be entitled to commence recovery action with respect to the debts once the Foz dispute is closed. This may include taking possession of and selling the home and investment property. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Um, now, in March 2017, did you accept this determination on your mother's behalf? Yes. And why did you do that? Well, um, because there was, again, the interest rate was incurring at such a high rate, what else can you do? Like, we, we, we just had to accept it uh, and, and, and move forward. And in April 2017, your mother entered into a contract to sell the family home for $815,000? Yes, that's correct. And in early May, did you get in touch with Suncorp again? Yes. And did you again speak with the same customer relations banker? Yes. Uh, and you've annexed a copy of emails that you exchanged with that person in early May as Exhibit 8 to your statement. If we could go to those, they're at SUN 0603-0002-0030. And could I ask that you turn to 0038. We see an email at the top of the page there from you to the customer relations banker. Yes. On the 2nd of May, you tell her that you've tried to call twice today to no avail. Suncorp has not contacted us in regards to the Ombudsman's outcome. Is this still yet to happen or have we been forgotten? Mum has received a couple of letters stating the interest-free time period expires this month, but the Ombudsman's ruling had not been addressed. Given the bank is enforcing interest during this time, it's in our best interest this address this now. So that was the email you sent um, to the customer relations banker on the 2nd of May? Yes. Uh, and the customer relations banker came back to you at 0036. We see the email from her uh, at the bottom of that page. And uh, perhaps it would 
assist if we put the subsequent page on the screen as well so we can see the entirety of the email. <coughs> was the effect of this email that the customer relations banker said that it was up to your mother to provide a proposal about how she would repay the debts under the loans? Yes. And we see at 0036 that you asked for information about each of the loans? Yes. And you said that you would submit a proposal the following day? Yes. Uh, you, you said earlier that you, you didn't understand part of the direction from FOS correctly. Were you referring there to the fact that you didn't understand it was incumbent on your mother to initiate this process? Yes, I, I, I must have misread the fact that it was up to us to approach the bank with and when this was drawn to your attention, we see that you promised a proposal the next day. And did you provide a proposal the next day? Yes, I did. Okay. And we see that proposal at 0032. Again, it would be useful if we had the subsequent page on the screen as well. Uh, and we see there that you told the customer relations banker that you and your mum had made the decision to sell the family home and that there would be 800,000 left from the proceeds of sale. Yes. That was after the real estate agent had taken his fee. Yes. And you said that your mother would use this money to settle the four loans from 2013. Yes. And you wanted the remainder of the proceeds of <coughs> sale, uh, approximately $30,000 to be given back to your mother? Yes, that's correct. Why did you want that amount given back to your mother? Um, because, well, just so she could use money to rent um, and just for expenses. Mm -hmm. And you made a proposal in relation to business loan B, which we see on the subsequent page. Um, you say, FOS formed the view that there was maladministration as it felt Suncorp should have made further inquiries about why further funds were needed for the construction and also restricted access to the loan funds via a progress loan facility as opposed to a standard loan. And you then refer to the account and the outstanding amount of $221,000. You say, business loan B, as stated, was irresponsibly lent. A payment plan will be set up where Jennifer will pay this loan back as it stands at $10 a week. Yes. And you then provided a screenshot um, of your mother's account balance in her bank account. Yes. Now, Suncorp wasn't happy with this proposal? Oh, no, they weren't. Did Suncorp ask for a statement of your mother's financial position and other supporting documents? I believe so. And how are you finding your communications with the customer relations banker about these matters in this period? Well, I mean, you can very poor. You can see these. She's just cut and pasting answers to me. It's very impersonal. It's yeah. It's exactly the reason why I didn't want to deal with her. And did you again raise concerns with SunCorp about your interactions with this customer relations banker? Yes, I did. And what happened after you raised the concerns this time? Nothing. Um, after you um, raised those concerns, did you start dealing with different people from the bank? I did. Um, I was contacted by a couple of different people uh, from, from that time. Mm -hmm. And you refer in your statement to a conversation you had with one Suncorp employee in which you say you were told that your mother could use um, the proceeds of sale to pay off the first four loans and that the surplus would be returned to her? Yes, that's correct. And how did you feel after that call? Somewhat relieved that something was actually going our way. Mm -hmm. And you also refer in your statement to a subsequent conversation you had with another Suncorp employee named Darren. Yes. What do you recall of that call? Um, I received a call from, or I spoke to a Darren, um, and in that conversation, we were speaking about how those four loans the, would be paid out by the sale of the family home, uh, and subsequently the surplus from the sale of the home, once it's paid those four loans off, would be sent back to my mother. Um, he agreed with all of that, um, but then towards the end of the conversation, I realised that we were on a different page and that he was allowing mum to keep the surplus funds as long as we agreed to their terms. And what did you understand their terms to be? 
that we repaid back the entirety of the fifth loan by November that year. After this call, did you send an email to Suncorp asking for confirmation of this in writing? Yes, I did. Why did you do that? Because I've been speaking to a number of people at Suncorp um, and my dealings there on a number of occasions where I've having to explain the situation, what had happened with Dad, and explained everything in great detail, every time I'm speaking to somebody there is very frustrating. And obviously the conversation that I had previously to Darren and the conversation that I've had with Darren was different. So I wanted in writing that I had spoken to somebody, they had agreed to give my back the surplus funds after we paid out those four loans, uh, and that, and at least then I had proof of the conversation. What did you think about the proposal that your mother would be required to pay back the entirety of business loan B in six months? Ridiculous. I think considering this loan has been deemed irresponsibly land, it's ridiculous for the bank to think that it can get that entirety of the money back in six months. And you've annexed um, the email uh, that you sent asking for um, this in <coughs> writing as Exhibit 9, and that shows that you sent that email on the 22nd of May 2017. Yes. And you've annexed the response that you received to that email as Exhibit 11. Yes. I'm sorry, I may have that exhibit number incorrect. Where's the letter? Exhibit 12. I'm sorry, just excuse me for a moment. It's exhibit 12 I should be taking you to, uh, Mr Lowe. Yes. So the response was a letter dated the 12th of June from Suncorp, is that right? Sorry, I may not have the right, I'm on number 12. Yes, so I'm sorry, I think I may have confused you, but the email that you sent asking for um, the offer to be put in writing yes. uh, was Exhibit 9, sent on the 22nd of May 2017. That's correct. Did you receive any email response to that? No. And was the first response you got to that the, the letter that I'm showing you on the 12th of June 2017? Yes. And did you receive or did your mother receive that letter on the 12th of June 2017? No, she didn't. Do you recall when she received it? Uh, approximately the 23rd of June. Okay. And the letter contained an offer in relation to the repayment of the five loans, is that right? That's correct. And the offer was expressed to be open until the 19th of June, seven days after the date of the letter? That's correct. And that date had passed by the time you got the letter? Yes, it had. And did you understand the offer in this letter to be um, the offer that Darren had discussed with you, which was that the proceeds of sale would be used to fully repay the four loans from 2013, the surplus would be returned to your mother, and your mother would have six months until the 30th of November 2017 to repay the entirety of business loan B? Yes. Um, did you discuss this with your mother? Yes, I did. And what did you and your mother think about this letter? Well, we weren't happy with it. What was the outstanding amount on business loan B at this time? 200, approximately 221000 And after you received this letter, did you contact Suncorp again? I believe so, yes. And we have an email that you sent to Suncorp, which is next to your statement as Exhibit 13. Is this the email that you sent in response to the letter dated the 12th of June? Yes. We see that you've sent this to a Suncorp person. You say, <coughs> as discussed with you on the phone yesterday, we received the letter on <coughs> Friday the 23rd of June. It was dated the 12th of June, requiring a response by the 19th. Obviously, this time frame was unachievable, and if that could please be rectified. Reading through the letter, it reads fine in relation to point four. Now, point four was the, that's the paragraph that required your mother to repay business loan B in six months? That's correct. 
and you said to Suncorp, since the loan was deemed by FOS to have been irresponsibly lent, we propose that it be repaid according to the existing pattern of repayments, being $1,001.88 per calendar month. Although this amount was for interest only, as there is now no interest payable on the loan, these repayments will go entirely towards the principal. This will leave the parties in a similar position to their position prior to the FOS determination, with the key difference being that, in accordance with the determination, Suncorp will no longer receive interest payments on this loan. Suncorp will still receive repayment of the principal, and that repayment will occur more quickly than it otherwise would have under the previous interest-only repayment arrangement. Now, did, did you have some assistance in drafting this email, Mr Lowe? Yes, I did. And who did you get that assistance from? Um, through CALC. The Consumer, the Consumer Action, Action Law, Law Centre. Centre. Yep. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, this was, as we can see, an offer to continue with the existing repayments for Business Loan B. Yes. You received an email from Suncorp in response to this proposal, which you've annexed at uh, Exhibit 14 to your statement. Yes, that's correct. We see there that the response the next day was, thank you for your email. Regrettably, what you have proposed is not able to be facilitated by the bank, as what is being requested is essentially an interest-free loan spanning 17 years. The bank is content to grant further time of up to 12 months to refinance this facility under the same conditions and can amend the existing offer dated 12 June, as you state that you only received this 23 June. The bank confirms that it is in a position to settle on the Hillsville property. Please contact us to discuss. Uh, now, um, you've annexed your response to this email as Exhibit 15 to your statement. That's correct. Uh, we see a response there on the same day. Did you have assistance with drafting this response as well, Mr Lowe? Yes, I did through, through the same avenue. Yes, and if we could have both the first page and the second page on the screen, we'll see the entirety of that email. And in that email back to Suncorp, drafted with the assistance of the Consumer Action Law Centre, you reiterated that business loan B was irresponsibly lent. Yes. And you repeated your proposal to make, to continue with the existing repayments of $1,101 a month until the principal was entirely repaid. That's correct. And do we see that approximately an hour later, you received a response from Suncorp at the top of the page? Thanks again for your email. At this juncture, the bank believes the offer currently put forward is fair and reasonable and again state that we are unable to facilitate your proposal as it stands. Yes, that's correct. Um, after this, did you contact FOS again to seek some assistance? Yes, I did. You've annexed an email that you sent to FOS as Exhibit 16 to your statement. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and if we could have both that page and the subsequent page on the screen, uh, we see that you said to FOS, as you can see from today's exchange of emails between ourselves and Suncorp, the bank is refusing to accept our proposal for repayment of business loan B. We believe that our proposal is reasonable as it preserves the positions of the parties but for the elimination of interest on business loan B in accordance with the FOS determination. Are you able to assist us in resolving this impasse by encouraging Suncorp to accept our reasonable proposal, which we have put forward as required by the FOS determination? Suncorp has so far given no legitimate reason as to why it will not accept our proposal. And the following day, did you receive the response from FOS that we see on the left-hand side of the page? Yes, I did. And was the essence of that response that because the FOS case was closed, FOS could not assist you? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, now, uh, on the same day as this email from FOS, the 30th of June 2017, the sale of the family home settled, is that right? That's correct. And after that, did you receive 
or did your mother receive another letter from Suncorp dated the 4th of July, which is annexed to your statement as Exhibit 18? Yes, that's correct. That was another offer from Suncorp to your mother, is that right? Yes. And if we could have the first and second pages on the screen. <coughs> we see in paragraph two that the letter records that settlement of the property has been completed and the proceeds have been used to fully repay the first four loans. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And we see that Suncorp offered to release the surplus sale proceeds if your mother agreed to repay business loan B uh, by the uh, 31st of July 2018, so 12 months later. That's correct. Uh, now, did you make a further offer to Suncorp in response to this letter? Yes. And you've annexed that as uh, Exhibit 19 to your statement? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so in response to this offer, we see that on the 21st of July, you said to Suncorp, in order to resolve this dispute on reasonable terms for both parties, our offer is that Jennifer pay $275 per week until the loan is paid off, $1,191 per calendar month. So that was a slight an um, increase. increase on the amount that you had previously offered, so slightly more than the existing repayments that were required. And yep. you annexed, annexed a statement of financial position to that email. Yes. Um, now, you made this offer even though your complaint to FOS was still on foot, is that right? Yes. And why did you do that? We just, we just wanted this to finish. Um, so we, we got together with mum and we were like, can we, can we offer some more money? Can we, we can come together as a family and we'll just chip in a little bit more. Maybe, some, maybe it's just more money that they're after. Um, so that's, that's why we did it whilst the FOS process was on to just, just bring this to an end. And having made this offer, did your mother then receive a letter in the email, a letter in the mail, which you have annexed as Exhibit 20 to your statement? That is correct. So that's a letter signed by David Carter, the Chief Executive Officer, Banking and Wealth at Suncorp? That's correct. Did you think this letter was in response to the offer that you had just made? Yes, I did. Uh, so. The letter's addressed to your mother and your father, is that right? Yes. Uh, and Mr Carter says, we're writing to let you know the minimum repayment for your loan has decreased. Uh, and the minimum repayment amounts will now be $792.53. Yes. What did you think when you saw this letter, Mr Lowe? Well, we were, I wouldn't say excited, but we were relieved. Um, that we thought Suncorp is listening to us. Um, they've actually decided to work with us instead of against us. Um, and they've, rather than meet what we'd offered, they've actually lowered it, signed by the CEO. And so we were, we were very relieved um, and, and happy that this had come to an end. And shortly after you received this letter, did you get a call from Wendy Colcott at uh, Suncorp? Yes. And did she tell you that Suncorp had another offer for you? Yes. And what did you say to that? Um, so I received a call from Wendy Colcott uh, and during that conversation she said to me, um, we have an offer here we'd like to, to present to you. Um, and I was obviously quite happy at this point. I said, yeah, I know we've got it in the mail. We're really happy. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're humbled that the, the, the amount has been lowered um, and obviously being signed by the CEO obviously just reflects, I guess, the thoughts from the bank. Uh, to which Wendy then said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, the offer that we've got here I've, um, is, is the offer that I'm referring to. What are you referring to? And I stated, I have a letter from you signed by the CEO with what I assumed was a proposal that the, the amount would have been dropped to $792.53. She said, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. I then asked her what she was talking about. 
She then refused to discuss the offer that she was speaking about. How did you feel after that call from <clears throat> Ms. Callcott? Frustrating would be an understatement. I mean, it, you know, this takes a lot out of someone. We were disappointed, yeah. And after you received, uh, I'm sorry, after you had this telephone call with Ms Callcut, um, did you send her an email the following day, which is Exhibit 21, to your statement? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so you asked her if she was able to email you the offers she mentioned on the phone last night in relation to the loan remaining? Ah, uh, yes. And in response, Ms Corcott said, uh, can you please send through a copy of the offer letter that you received last Friday? I'm not in a position to put any other offers to you until I can verify who has put that offer in writing to you. I have confirmed with the CEO's office that they have not made any offer to you under those terms. Yeah. What, what did you make of this, Mr Lowe? The fact that this bank has no idea that they've sent me this letter, which has been signed by the CEO, I find very alarming. Who's running this bank? Um, I was extremely concerned. I was worried. And I'm, nerv I'm very nervous. <laughs> yeah. And a couple of weeks later, did you receive another letter from Suncorp, which you've annexed as Exhibit 22 to your statement? A letter dated 22 August 2017. Yes, that's correct. And if we could have the second page of that on the screen at the same time, that would assist. Uh, did this letter contain another offer in relation to settling the repayment <coughs> of business loan B? Uh, yes. Different to what was contained in the letter from the CEO? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and two options are given in this offer, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and the first option for your mother was that she would have five years to repay the loan as long as it remained secured against the Queensland property. Is that's that correct. right? Yes. And the other proposal was that she would have two years to repay the loan if it was secured against the block of land in Healesville. Is that right? Yes. Um, now, uh, how did you react to this new offer? Well, we, I mean, it was, it was, it was okay. We, we, were, we were happy that the bank was offering us some, some kind of a deal or an offer. Um, the fact that we had five years, um, I guess, breathing space was somewhat of a relief. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was acceptable. Did you ask Foz to look at the letter that you got from the CEO and consider whether that had been misleading to you and your mother? Yes, I did. Uh, and uh, did Foz organise a conciliation telephone conference? Yes, it did. Did you participate in that conciliation conference? Yes, I did. Uh, now, this related to a second complaint that you had made to Foz, is that right? Yes. Uh, and that complaint was in relation to the handling of um, uh, the negotiations um, after the determination that FOS had made the first time. Is that right? That's correct. Now, the conciliation conference was held by phone. Uh, who participated in the conference apart from you? So it was myself and my mother. Um, it was our case manager at the time at FOS. It was Wendy, Wendy Colcott and the other representative from the bank that I... The customer relations Correct. banker. Yes. Were you surprised that the customer relations banker, about whom you'd com whom you'd complained to SunCorp and to Foz, was involved in that call? Yes, I was. Uh, how did it make you feel to have her involved in that call? Yeah, I was. I was not happy about it. Um, were you given the option of proceeding with the conciliation conference without her participating in that call? No, I wasn't. I, I specifically said when when our case manager introduced the two people from Suncorp. As soon as that person's name was mentioned, I instantly said, 
I have spoken to you both about the. I've spoken to Foz and I've spoken to Suncorp about this matter. I do not wish this person to be on this phone call because they make me feel very uneasy and that they are not someone that I'd like to deal with. And did the customer relations banker tell you in the conciliation conference that the offer contained in this letter, the 22 August letter, would only be open for a certain time? Yes, um, I was told that if I was to progress that letter to determination, the offer at the time would be withdrawn. When you say that letter, do you mean your FOS complaint? Yes. Yes, so if, were you told that if you progressed with your FOS complaint to determination, Suncorp would withdraw this offer? Yes. Okay. Um, and w what was your reaction to that? Well, it's it's a th kind of a threat. It's like a well, yeah. We didn't respond very well to that, and we became very nervous. And after the conciliation conference, did you receive a letter from Foz setting out its preliminary view on your complaint? Yes. And you've annexed that as Exhibit Twenty Three to your statement. And the, yes. pre the preliminary view was that Suncorp hadn't misled you in the letter from the CEO and that FOS was entitled to apply the surplus proceeds of sale to business loan B. Yes. And after that, did you make the decision to withdraw your FOS complaint? Yes. Why did you do that? Because we were not sure what the banks were capable of doing and that offer that was on the table was, I guess, better than nothing. Um, and we were scared that if we did progress it, and they, they were going to withdraw the offer as they had stated, what were they going to do after that? Did you subsequently receive a deed from Suncorp? Yes. And did that deed require your mum to repay business loan B in five years? Yes, that's correct. Did it contain a confidentiality clause? Yes, it did. What was your reaction and your mum's reaction to that clause? Um, we obviously had a few questions regarding that, that clause. Um, and a few requests which were not met. Did you have concerns that that clause would prevent your mum from progressing another complaint that she had in the Credit and Investments Ombudsman about the conduct of the broker who assisted your mother and father to get the loans in the first place? Yes, that's correct. So there is also an investigation into the conduct of the broker, which has been going by the CIO since March last year. Um, and I requested that Suncorp um, email me in writing that that confidentiality clause in the deed would not conflict with anything that we needed to, I guess, submit or speak to the CIO about. Did you get that confirmation from Suncorp? No, I didn't. And has your mum signed the deed that was sent? No, she hasn't. Why not? Because we need that clarified. Uh, and... How much longer oh, do you expect only to... Only two or three questions, I'm yes. sorry, Commissioner. Uh, I really just wanted to ask, finally, um, Mr Lowe, uh, having been through this process with Suncorp, um, what would you say about the impact that the process has had on you and on your mother? It's, it's extremely stressful. I mean, the impact that it's had on mum, she's not here today, because she just, the, the, the pressure and the expectation, it just, Everything the bank and obviously what has happened to my father, it's just, it's taken its toll on her, unfortunately. It's taken its toll on all of us. It's just very, very stressful and a lot of pressure, you know, just, and trying to live a normal life and work full time. It's, it's, it's been very, very difficult. Approximately how many people do you think you've dealt with at Suncorp over the life of this process? Yeah, yeah it would be approximately 15 to 20 people. And how many hours do you think you've spent uh, trying to work out these debts on behalf of your mother? Hundreds. And do you feel that Suncorp showed compassion for you and your mother, and your mother uh, in the period following your father's death? No, I don't believe Suncorp has shown us any compassion at all as humans. I have no further questions, Commissioner. Ms Mitchell, well, how long would you expect to be with Commissioner, me? I have no questions for Mr Lowe. No Lowe. questions. Very well. Then, 
Thank you very much uh, uh, for your attendance. Mr Lowe, uh, you may step down and you're excused further attendance and we'll come back at uh, uh, five past two.